Hola YouTube, my name is Ricardo Lino and I'm a wheel addict. Deco, come here. <laughs> this is probably one of the only three occasions that I can see myself using the boots that come on the USD shadow. But watch this video and I'll tell you what are the other two. <laughs> Okay, so the USD Shadow Eugen Anin Pro 3. Okay, let's do this, but before even start talking about this, let me just tell you that this video, it's shamelessly self-sponsored by myself and my patron. And yeah, these kits were actually sent to me by USD. I did not pay for these skates, but that does not mean that I'm not going to give my honest opinion about this because USD haven't seen this video before you guys that are watching it now and it's not going to change my honest opinion about this. Now, about my Patreon, yes, the sponsor of this video. <laughs> I have made some changes on my Patreon. I added some new tiers and from now on I'm gonna start always telling you guys who are my new patrons every month. So this month I got two new patrons. They are uh, Jace Parker and Enrique Suarez. And because I changed the tiers on my new patron, to celebrate that, uh, from now on, I'm going to start giving away one Will Addict brand shirt every month. So this month winner is... This was made before I came here. Edward T. Edward is probably my longest patron and I promise you this was completely random. Anyway, thank you Edward for the support and contact me via Patreon and we'll send you the shirt. Now, let's start talking about this and let me start by speaking about the main differences between these the previous version and the original version. Well, from the original version of the shadow, which used to be spelled differently, but it still comes spelled the different way, the first, the original way here on the soul plate. X S J A D O. And the new way to spell it, it's S H A D O W. Anyway, shadow used to be a brand, shadow spelled differently, it's now a model from the company USD. A lot of stuff happened in the past, but what you need to know or you, what you may not want to know is that this was previously just a brand. On the first ever shadow, on the original shadows, they used to come with not a boot like this. Not like this. They used to come with a foot wrap that was a, a low shoe, a regular shoe that you could use on a daily basis. You you can also use these on a daily basis, but I will tell you what are my three occasions where I can see myself using it, but later in the video. 
the, the previous version started coming already with this um, liner. It's, it's the, the MyFit Eclipse liner and it's basically a shoe like the foot wrap, but it's comp a lot higher. So it's, it's very different. Now, at the end of the day, what makes this skate different is that they used to be padding inside the cuff of the skate and now you don't need that padding anymore because you have the padding on the liner, which is this shoe, this big boot that you have here. That's the main difference between these ones and the original ones. Now, from these ones, these boots, these Eclipse, my, my feet Eclipse liner with this skate, and the, the previous one, the main difference is that this is using the original cuff. So on this one, there's nothing here. There's no bolt here that will allow you to bent forward and having the, the cuff go with you. It's like, it's called an inched cuff. This one doesn't have that. So it's just a one piece in the back. There's pros and cons about that. I'll, I'll talk about them later in the video, but these are, I would say, the main differences. Now, comfort wise, let me tell you that these ones felt to me way more comfortable than the previous version. As I said, the main difference should be here, but there's also another difference from these Eugen Enin skates to the, um, the first USD shadows that came out. So there's a one piece here only. So the 45 degree strap and the forward and the front strap on these Eugen Enin skates, it's one piece of foam with two straps connecting it. So when you strap it down, the whole thing comes down. On the first USD Shadow, the one that I made the review, this was two separate pieces. So I used to feel some pressure here on the, the top of my foot. And with these ones, I do not feel that pressure. So they feel to me more comfortable. That's a good thing. Now, by the way, these skates are size 43. Yeah, which is like the shoes are size 43. And I feel like they are true to size, at least to me. I believe that's important. And if you're curious, stock, this skate comes with, obviously not with this frame, it comes with a, with a Kaiser Fluid 5, with four on each skate, of course, four USD wheels. And the skate, straight out of the box, it's 2,350 grams, which makes it, the second heaviest skate that I've tried. The heaviest skate was the Rams HR 2.5. The last Rams skates that I had and reviewed, those were the heaviest skates that I've had and reviewed at 2.5 kilos. This one is 2,350 grams, which is it's quite heavy. You don't really feel it that much, honestly, but it is a heavy skate. Now, it's that weight with four wheels, like skating flat. Now, talking about performance, which is probably the reason why you would buy these skates, I do feel that by not having the inched cuff, by not having that um, movement happening here, I feel like these ones are, yeah, more stable. And I feel like I don't have that much side lean or side bend that I used to have on some shadow skates. So. I like it. I remember when I first skated a uh, original cuff, a non-inched cuff with the foot wrap and with the foam on the top, like the original version. When you first got them, they would be uh, supportive, but after a while, they would start leaning in a lot. With these ones, well, I, I did not skate them for a month, but I did skate them for a couple of weeks and I didn't felt that happen. Now, compare these to the previous ones with the first USD shadows that I've tried, the ones with the inched cuff, I did felt like more supportive and I didn't felt that inner bend, like that inner lean that I would feel on the previous ones. And funny enough, they have huge plates, right? But even with these negative plates, because there's not as much forward flex, I kind of feel like the negatives when you have an inched cuff are easier than when you have a a cuff like this, a solid piece, which 
there's obviously a way to justify it about the way you do negatives. It's all about the way you bend your knees and rotate your foot and all that, but that's going to be a different topic. But yeah, I feel like negatives are a tiny bit harder on these than on the previous ones. In fact, I find it easier to do negatives with the Mesmer skates that I just reviewed on the last video, which you can watch the review here. I find it easier to do negatives with the Mesmer skates than I find it to do negatives with the shadows, which have a huge plate and they're known for that. Looking at these skates, I need to speak about the original skate. As I said, they come with the Kaiser Fluid 5 and four 60 millimeter wheels. I understand why USD is doing it um, and straight out of the box USD is trying to make a skate that people will enjoy the way they roll but I would say that most of the people that would get the shadow skate they'll get it for grinding and there's no deny that it's just easier to grind when you have uh, anti-rocker or like two wheels big and two smaller wheels in the middle type of setup or even freestyle. In fact, when Eugen Anin released the, the promo edit for this skate, he was actually skating anti-rocker. But again, I understand why they wanted to come out with a flat skate so that people will have a better time when they first get the skates out of the box. I find it easier to do a lot of the tricks with anti-rocker. Obviously, I did skate the stock skate, which is what you saw in the beginning of this video. I also skated them anti-rocker, I skated them anti-rocker for uh, at least like a week or so. And I also skated them for a bit with one of my favorite flat frames on the moment. This is the T-neck frame, T-N-E-C frame. Yeah, the colors don't really go along that good. I know that some people will like it, some people don't. But by skating flat, I will say that I had the best time skating with the T-neck. I kind of felt like it was a bit more protected, but I was also skating with very hard wheels in the middle, 95 hay wheels in the middle, and I think it's 92 in the front and back. It was a different feel when I skated with this frame and these wheels. I'm not saying it's better or worse, I'm just sharing my opinion and how I felt about this. Yeah, but I, I, I don't think I don't think either the frame that comes on the skate or the wheels are bad at all. I really like the Kaiser Fluid 5. I think it's an amazing uh, flat frame. The wheels are good, but if I would have like other wheels in the middle, I would have a better time because you, you feel a bit more in ease. You know that you're not gonna get stuck as easy. Something that people always ask is like, do you feel like your heel is lifting up or something? I don't feel that. So at first, when I first got it, I, th I thought it was really weird to just have a piece of Velcro on, on the skate and a, a piece of like a line of Velcro right here. It looks weird, but it does work. At least to me, I kind of felt like when my foot gets in place, I don't feel like to start with, like the, the boot is thick, huh? it, it does not feel like a regular boot at all. When I try to walk with this, it kind of feels like the sole is like a solid piece sole. So like when I move, it doesn't really feel like it's bending as much as I was expecting or as I'm used on regular shoes. So it feels a bit more like a, a snowboard boot, which is kind of like what it looks to. And the side, it's like very stiff. So the whole thing, when my when the back of the boot, the Velcro is inside, I don't feel it lifting up, especially if the laces are tight properly. And something that I found interesting is I can see my socks. I don't know if you can see it from there, but it kind of feels like the thong is not wide enough. So, especially because I'm using wide socks, by the way. Another shameless self-plug, these are the Willenic socks. 
<laughs> anyway, so white socks here, and you could see it. So it, it really, what looks to me is that the tongue is not wide enough. It's not a problem, but you can see the socks. So yeah, that's one thing. But the tongue is really soft, really jelly, if you can say it. It's like the, the one that used to come on the original Mesmers, the first Mesmers, also comes on the Icon skates. So it's cool. It's really comfortable, huh? really comfortable. Now, I didn't felt like my foot was moving. This front strap, as I said previously, really comfortable. The strap on top, well, it's still here. I, I previously had problems with um, straps ripping on shadows and stuff like that, but I believe that this material that they are using looks a bit like a backpack. Seems to me like it's strong enough. I had Eric Suarez, one of my patrons, sending me a message and asking, because he has the same skates, he was scared of how he was going to protect that, this piece here. I feel like the front buckle, it's too long. My feet is not too narrow, huh? And even with me on one side, pulling a bit more of the strap in so that I, when I turn, when I close it, it should be shorter. But even like that, it's still very long. I don't know if there's a lot of people out there that needs this much strap. And also the strap being so long gets on the way. It really gets on the way like here and it starts just getting nasty and ugly. But Enrique was mainly scared about this metal piece here not being protected enough. I told him like, look, this is, as you can see, the shadow. This has been used for a while. I didn't have problems with it. I know that with time, it's gonna be, start getting exposed. When your soles start getting older and older and older, it's gonna start getting exposed. And of course, with metal being exposed like this, you either gonna feel like it's stopping, it's noisy, it can break, of course. Yeah, I guess those skates are going to break. He was talking about making a 3D printed protection. I don't really use that type of stuff, but I understand the reason why people would use it. The shock absorber, I like the color of this. It really gives a completely different look to this. Check this, the skate without the shock absorber doesn't have any orange, but just the orange of the shock absorber makes it look really cool. Of course, you will have orange also on the top of the liner. The material of the shock absorber, it's cool. I like it. It's, it's soft, but it's not extremely soft. You know, when something is extremely soft, it doesn't really do anything. So it puts your foot in the right position, in my opinion. I like the position where I feel like I'm at. I always give the K2 example. A lot of people understand that. The K2 is one of those skates that you feel like your heel is going too low. When I put my feet on K2, I kind of feel like I'm falling backwards. There's nothing wrong about it, but you, you need to adjust. But by having your heels lower, you're going to feel like you roll really fast forward. But when you go backwards, it kind of feels like you're always falling backwards when you land backwards. So I like the balance point on these shadow skates. Okay. Now, something that people may be wondering is how much does those cost? Well, these cost 379 euros on Bladeville and on most shops. Bladeville is a shop that usually supports what I do and sponsor this channel. So here's bladeville.com. But you can find them probably at your favorite skate shop with a different frame, as I said previously, and with the USD stock wheels, which are good. So 379 euros for these. Is there anything that you really don't like? Yes, the sound. It really bothers me the way that this skate sounds. And I know that a lot of people really love it, but it's, it has a very specific sound. I'm not gonna say it's something wrong with that, but it's a very personal opinion. So example, I came from the Mesmer skates, which used to be the old USD Classic Throne or the, the old USD Throne that then became Classic Throne that nowadays are called the Mesmer Thrones. And on those skates, they even put like some neoprene in between the sole plate and the shell so that it, it, the sound is way more muffed. Now on these skates, it's way more plasticky. I don't know, like the rattling from these things here from these metal pieces and the rattling that comes from this 45 degree strap it's just a, again there's nothing wrong with that it has a very authentic sound it's a very specific sound for this skate i don't really like it but i 
there's nothing that they can do about it. So maybe there is, I don't know. But that's one thing that I don't really like it. And the second thing is, as I started this video, there are only three ways that I could see myself using these shoes. One of them, I mean, I live in a place with beach, as you can see here. So yeah, I could see myself skating around and then getting to the beach and then just going like today or filming a video here and coming with this. Not that I skate my aggressive skates for long distance, so not really something that I would do as often. The, the second um, situation where I would see myself using these like every once or twice a year or every once every two years I'll go to Barcelona. So I would go to Barcelona and to go in the metro they will tell me that you can't use your your skates. So I got my skates, I take the boots and I go from one place to the other and that's about it. Or if I go to the supermarket I know that they're very active over there and I would really enjoy to have these. But the original shadow at the low shoes, the foot wrap, and there was like a, a completely different thing. For a lot of people, it was like that shoe was like a statement that you skate. It's like sometimes you, your skate would be completely done. Your shoes were not smelling as good anymore, of course. You just ruined your whole skate because you skated them a lot. Your shoes probably were not smelling the best, but you still had the shoes, you could still wear them, and they were still, again, that statement, that skater statement. With these, well, that would be a third situation where I could use them, and that would be if I would go to, to fight on a boxing match, but I don't fight, so I don't really know if I would ever use them for boxing, but they really look to me like a, <laughs> a boxing boot somehow. So this would be the three situations that, where I could see myself using these shoes while on the original shadow is completely different. Just editing this video right now and I think I thought of a fourth situation where I could use these boots and that would be for snowboarding. So I may need to move to a place with snow just to be able to use these boots. But in terms of performance I understand why they did it. It's just weird that we still have this skate which was made around the creating a solution for skaters to have a shoe to walk around and they jump in and nowadays it's still that but the shoe it i don't really see functionality on it but at the end of the day as i just said it really gives us better performance so yeah i'm not saying it's bad it's just like it's just different and probably i need time to adjust to that I'm not going to adjust to the sound. It's going to be weird to adjust to the sound. And yeah, that is about it. That's about my opinions. Do I like them? Yes, I do. Am I going to be skating these skates as my main skates? I could probably see myself skating these sole plates on another boot. I do not dislike the boot. I do dislike the sound. Again, as I just said, nothing wrong with these. It's just, yeah. Ah, on one last thing. Would I like to be something different other than the, <laughs> the straps being shorter? Well, maybe, maybe it would be interesting to have these, all these little screws and all these little things come with Loctite. Or if they don't come with, I would tell you, when you get your skates, put some Loctite. Because if you look into some of the clips at the beginning of this video, you will see that some of the bolts just came loose. They came loose from factory, so I didn't tighten them right away when I started skating them. In no time, they just came all loose and that happened. So yeah, that is about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this review of the USD Shadow Eugen Nanin 3, the E3. It's an amazing skate. It really matches Eugen's style. And yeah, congratulations Eugen. If you get these, you won't be getting a bad skate at all. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. If you want to support what I do here, you can always become a patron. You can become a member of this channel here on YouTube. And you should never forget why we all started skating in this studio in the other studio from the last video in the green or whatever. We all started skating because it's fun. Cheers and see you soon. I imagine if I would do this and they would stay on my feet. <laughs> Let me see if I can backflip and land no hands. And no bearings. <laughs>